The steam engine, for its type, is one of the most versatile things on land. And the diesel engines are the power behind the mixed traffic goods and specials that go all around the island of Sodor. This is NWR Stories. Amends. It was a joyous occasion on the island of Sodor. And this was due to the fact that Stepney the Bluebell Engine has once again decided to grace the island with his presence. It had been 62 long years since Stepney had visited before, so the engines were very excited to have him back. Stephanie was grateful to be reunited with old friends. Friends that he hadn't seen in many years. Not to mention also reuniting with family as well. A little known fact that is not often discussed when bringing up the subject of Thomas and his friends is that Thomas and Stephanie are actually cousins due to being built by the London, Brighton and South Coast Railway. So I guess you can say, there are two relatives that hold all the fame. But overall, it was a joyous occasion to have the Bluebell engine back on Sodor. One morning, Stephen was shunting some coaches for his branch line train on Thomas's line. Since it was the ending of the summer season, the traffic was still underway of going back to normal, so Thomas could use the extra help. Let me just say, it's, it's good to have you back on the island, cousin. I swear, it does not feel like it's been 62 years. Well, believe it, we're not as young as we used to be. Heck, we're both over a hundred years old, said Stephanie, smiling. Heh, <laughs> speak for yourself. You're older than me by many years. Mr. Born in 1875. Heh <laughs> laughed Thomas cheekily. So, what's been going on on the other railway, Stepney? Please, let us all know. Well, as you know, since I last visited, we've been getting more engines on our railway. But... It's also not really a good thing, because there are a lot of engines awaiting overhaul at the moment. Like, for example, Adams is still waiting for his overhaul, said Stephanie. Adams? The radial tank? Ah, I remember him. I remember I saw him once, when I was getting ready to leave for the Isle of Solo back in the set back in the 50s. Oh, he was a very nice engine. And last time we heard, you were laid up for an overhaul, Stepney. How are you here now? Well, some fans of the Railway series and the television series decided to put some money aside to get me restored. They raised about a couple of mil, and boom, I was back in working order. Yeah, I say, it feels really good to be back in steam. But that's not even the best part. I've actually been at Crovengate, Crovensgate Works for the last few months getting overhauled. Crovensgate? I thought they were closed, said Thomas. Well, cousin, that was a cover-up to hide the fact that I was there. Because if they knew I was there, they would it would hit the news and the press and the whole area would be compromised. 
Well, Stephanie does have a point there. Because let's just say, this island does get a lot of press. Because we are celebrities after all, thanks to that railway series and the television series. Well, I have to go. My train must, my train must go on, said Stephanie. And with a toot of his whistle, and the guard's whistle blew, Stephanie set off for Thomas's branch line. During Stephanie's travels, he had to stop at a level crossing and wait for a passing bus. Huh, I wonder if this bus is Bertie. It's been a while since I've seen him. However, Stephanie was wrong. The bus turned out to be the double-decker menace named Bulgy. Oh, hello there. I don't think I've ever seen you before last time I was here. Huh. <laughs> Push off with you. Huh. <laughs> Railways need to be turned into roads, grumbled the double-decker menace. Well, wasn't he charming? The level crossing went down, and Stephanie went on with his train. As his tra travels continued, he arrived at the station on Thomas's branch line. Well, that was a nice run. And when all his passengers left, he puffed away to the station to get some cars. Meanwhile, Ted was shunting Stephanie's train into the sidings. He had been shunting all day, so he was tired, but he did not mind volunteering where help was needed. When he looked over, he saw his friend, well, former friend, in the sidings, Bear. Hello, Bear. How are you today? said Ted, smiling. I'm doing fine. Um, how are you? said Bear, hesitant. Well, I'm fine. It's nice to shunt. It gives me a nice little quiet time to myself, but it is uh, a bit lonely after all, said Ted. Yes, that does seem like it's unfortunate, said Bear, looking away from Ted. I was wondering if you'll be able for a chat. No, I'm, I'm kind of busy today. And, um, well, I don't know. So with a toot of his horn, Bear left the station with his train. <sighs> Maybe next time. Maybe next time indeed. He was on couple from Stephanie's cars and trundled sadly away. Not long after that, Stephanie puffed into the yard and coupled up to his cars. He was ready to go, but something came up. Sorry, Stephanie. I left my uh, I left my water bottle in the office. I'll be right back. And Stephanie's driver walked away. Okay, take your time," said Stephanie, waiting. While Stephanie was waiting, Andy, the class forty, arrived into the station because he was waiting on an exchange train with Gordon. And he looked over and saw Stephanie. Stephanie. Hi, um, it's, it's been a while. Welcome back. Um, you never thought I would see you again, said Stephanie, glaring at the diesel. I thought you wouldn't want to work on an island with obsolete steam engines. Andy, who has been repenting for his past as a horrid diesel, felt hurt by that comment, but he accepted it. Listen, Stephanie, I never got the chance to apologize, but 
I've been on this railway for about a year now, and I felt bad for how I treated steam engines in the past. I realize that you guys are hard workers too, so can you please find it in your smoke box to forgive me? Said Andy, apologetically. Yeah, when trucks fly, said Stephanie, rudely. Not long after that, Stephanie's driver returned, and Stephanie was ready to go. With a toot of his whistle, he chopped off with his train. That night, Stephanie returned to the sheds. He was very tired from his long, exciting day on the island of Sobor. So, Stephanie, how did you enjoy your first day back on the island? Well, it was good until I ran into a certain someone said Stephanie, with a tone. That's someone being who? said James. That diesel that visited the same time I did and was very rude to us, said Stephanie. Are you referring to Andy? The big green diesel with D261 on his side? Yes, him, said Stephanie. Well, don't I understand what he did in the past, said Arthur, but from what I've heard, well, yeah, from what I've heard, he has been, he has changed. I mean, I arrived shortly after this incident happened, but I have seen nothing but change since he arrived back on the island. The next morning, Andy rolled into the yard, ready to start his work. When he stopped, because he noticed that Ted was feeling down. Good morning, Ted. It's a good day, isn't it? Uh, I wish I could say it was, said Ted with a sad expression. What's going on? said Andy. Well, I tried being friendly to Bear, and he sort of just shot me down. I guess even though I've been doing good recently, I am still not forgiven. I see what you mean. Stepney hasn't really been forgiving either. <sighs> it makes me wonder, were we really horrid monsters back in the day? I guess we were. But it was because of the environment we were brought up in. They wanted us to hate steam engines. They wanted us to flex our superiority. But look what happened. Many year, it was less than a couple of years after all this stuff happened where, you know, our classes were being put up in scrap yards. And there's not really many of us left now, isn't there? No. When I was selected for preservation, right before I was selected for preservation, I was set up to be scrapped. But luckily a man bought me, and I was on the Dean Forest Railway for a little while, and then I was sent... Well, to hear. It really gives me appreciation for islands like this when we take in engines and give them a new working life. Oi, you two. You guys are needed at the station immediately. Both of us? Said Ted. Yes, both of you. You need to head there right now. Said the yard foreman. Well, you heard the boss. Let's get out of here. With the toot of his horn, Andy even rolled away. And not long after he did, Ted moved as well. It didn't take too long, and the two engines arrived into the station. They heard a huge fuss, and when they arrived into the station, they saw what it was. The coaches were packed, and they were late because the train wasn't moving. They looked and saw that Bear was sitting still. 
What's wrong? Said Ted to Bear. Well, looks like my uh, engine's giving me trouble today. So the train won't be able to go anymore. That is unfortunate. You're in tip top shape. Why would your engine fail right now? Well, in all honesty, I've been having a lot of mechanical issues, and not to mention, the coaches are pretty heavy. This is a big train heading to uh, Barrow and Furness. Gordon, Gordon would have been here to take it, but he's uh, at Barrow and Furness right now. You're in tip-top shape. Why would your engine fail right now? Well, in all honesty, I've been having a lot of mechanical issues, and not to mention, the coaches are pretty heavy. This is a big train heading to uh, Barrow and Furness. Gordon, Gordon would have been here to take it, but he's uh, at Barrow and Furness right now. Hey, Andy, do you think we'll be able to do this? I don't see why not, so let's just get to it then. You would do that for me. Why? Because that's what good engines do, my friend. Now, step aside and I'll help you out. Soon, Bear was moved to the other siding, and the two diesels backed onto the train, ready to start. Let's do this, Andy. I'm right behind you, Ted. And with the toot of their horns, the two diesels rolled up the station with the heavy train. They started off slow, just to get past the station. But as soon as they passed out of the station, here came the sprint. Time for a sprint. I'm ready when you are, said Andy, and the engines began their long journey. The diesels began to charge up the hill, pulling with all their might. Their wheels strained from the force, but they still carried on. They raced across the bridge as the, as the passengers cheered as they went on. The two diesels ran across the level crossing. And right after that, they surged through the tunnel. On the other side of the tunnel, Stephanie was waiting at the junction to let the busy train pass. I guess Bear is coming through. I might have, I might need to make space, said Stephanie. But before he knew it, he saw the two diesels running past with their heavy train. Stephanie was surprised to see the two diesels going past him at a, at a high speed. He sat there in amazement. Well, I guess I was wrong about him. Seems like he really has changed, said Stephanie, feeling very sorry. And with a toot of his whistle, he went past the junction with his train. Later, Ted and Andy were resting in the station sidings after their long journey back from Barrow and Furness. Well, that was exciting. A very exciting journey, if I do say so. Yes, indeed. I feel very fulfilled after that day, after today. Uh, maybe that's just old age catching up to us. <laughs> I don't doubt it. We're, we're well over 60 years old now. Yes, but we did a good job, said Ted. We would have to agree, said Stephanie and Bear, pulling up in unison. Well, I guess I can say I was wrong about you, Andy. You have really came a long way, and I noticed that your behavior has changed. So, I just want to say I forgive you, and I'm sorry for the way I've acted since I've been here. Not at all, Stephanie. I can see why you are the way you are towards me. And, again, I apologize. And thank you. And I guess I was wrong about you, my old friend. I can see that you're 
Your heart is pure, my friend, figurative speaking. You are not the same Diesel that was here many years ago, and I owe you an apology. Well, sometimes, sometimes this railway really helps with a redemption. A lot of people, a lot of people on this island have given me the benefit of the doubt, and have changed my ways. And not to mention, seeing one of your relatives blown up will do that to you. But, thank you. Thank you, Bear. And since that day, the four engines have became very good friends. All it took was a little realization and the fact that just as people can, engines can change too. The end.